Cue the fire, and this is Jerome Powell's final warning from the entire world. And actually, there is a company that could actually do some bad things to the entire world, and you've probably never even heard of their name. Also, Bitcoin ready to break, you see? Not good. Uh, lower, lower highs, lower lows. Okay. Getting ready to either make some money or lose some money. But I want to talk to you guys also about the repo market, the Fed's balance sheet, how all of this works together against you, and how it's like one dude. Come on. The, the power of one dude with his little chompers. Actually, there are news articles that are looking at a 10% interest rate, if just in case you wanted to refinance that house. But the world is screaming. And again, I, I did a video yesterday about, uh, yesterday about this, but now I need to like keep scaffolding so you can understand what in Hades is going on. The treasury market is one shock away from breaking. I mean, now media is starting to pick up on this. We got the world. They're like, this is going to go. Everyone back away. This isn't just a dumpster fire. Fed market guru has a final warning for Powell. And actually, they're calling it done. They said it, it did. In fact, break something. Actually, quite a few somethings. Look at what is currently going on. Bank of Japan, not too good. Then BOE also not too good. Then Credit Suisse, not so good. Then SNB for three weeks in a row. Then the BOJ, which is different than a BJ. It has an O in it, so you have to go B-O. Oh, oh, BOJ. And as the article says, the only thing that has not been fully broken yet is the most important market in the world, U.S. Treasuries and the repo market, but don't hold your breath. Which until recently, here, here is the, the overnight reverse repo purchase, repurchase agreements. That's a great one. Well, basically you have to know this, it, it didn't even exist, right? Until all of a sudden it did, which I'll explain the Fed's balance sheet too. Because one second it, it it doesn't it doesn't exist, and then the next second it's it's destroying the world. The reverse repurchase agreements have to be paid back with what interest? Where are they going to get that money? They got to get it from the Fed. So everyone with money market funds, guess where it's all rolling off to right now? The banks are like, get this off of our effing balance sheet. Put it over here, let the Fed, and every night, back and forth, and now we're approaching, what are we, 2.4, 2.8, 3 trillion, and keeps growing. So it's like, they're like, okay, we have a solution. Let's, let's, uh, which actually, this kind of was. It's the craziest thing. When this dam, this dam's breaking. They're like, duct tape? No. Uh, how about uh, crazy glue? Uh, no. Okay, why don't we st stick someone in it? Here, Janet, put your whole body in this hole. Does it work? No, it's too big. And looking at these disasters, okay, with our monetary policy that we currently have, you go all the way back to 08. Here, here's uh, here's the Fed's balance sheet. It didn't even exist. It was like nothing. And then all of a sudden, if you look right here, within one hour, that would have been September 8th, 2008, everything locked up. The Fed is like, okay, wait, wait, I have a really good idea. We're going to create a balance sheet over here and we're going to, okay, this is, this is how it's going to go. We're going to create this, this little document and then, uh, uh, we're going to, we're going to buy bonds with it, but, but not yet. We need you banks because we legally can't do that. And that's kind of what's happening in Switzerland. So in Switzerland, the bank is like becoming like the, the, the back, back alley girl. That's like, okay, I'll take one for the team. And everyone's like, shh, don't say anything, Sandy. And there was only like no dealers that ever, these, those are banks. When I say dealers, the banks, and, and no one knows who's showing up, you know, in, in, in the back alley with Sandy, but it was zero for a forever since 2008. Then there's 10 and 20. And now all the banks are rushing saying we need liquidity. We need pristine collateral. Now the Fed's like, oh, what do we do? So, okay. So currently this Fed balance sheet, now people think, oh my gosh, look at all the money that they just create. No, that that's, that's not how it works. It's just an entry and, and I call it a Chuck E. Cheese token. They can't buy anything with it. So what they do is they have the banks buy the bonds. So Janet over there creates bonds, T-bills. And then anyone want to buy it? No one wants to buy it. So then the whole market crashes, but there's a savior. That would be your bank. Your bank says, we're going to take you, Bob, Bob's money and buy the bond. And then what do we do with it? Then the Fed's like, now we can switch it.
or we can swap it and we'll just let it run off. And that will save the day. But right now, as you can see above my head, see how it's starting to curve? They're allowing the bonds to mature and run off. And just within months, the entire world breaks. So I have a solution and it's a horrible solution, but it's the only thing, I mean, it worked. So it's like, okay, let's, let's keep doing this. Otherwise the whole world burns, which maybe they want that to happen. I keep asking you and you say, yeah, I think that is what they want to happen. So then they have their solution. Fed now will jump in and save the day. Right now we need someone buying these bonds. So then you front run it. Cause that's what happens. T-bills, bond, whatever it is. Once they hear the Fed's going to do it, they're like, oh my gosh, run and get it because it takes them, oh, in 30 days, we're going to buy bonds. Well, what do we all do? We jump on the, the bandwagon to make some money. Oh, hey, Jerome, if you're listening to me, okay, all right, you got to get this thing going. Otherwise, I hate to say it, the world will burn. You haven't felt it yet because it takes time, it takes months. Just like, here, everyone, have 10 trillion in stimmies. Look, it did nothing. A year later, oh my gosh, as much as I hate to say it, and the, the Fed and every the whole financial system, can we please, can we just go back to real money? Hey, that would solve a lot of problems. The only problem it wouldn't solve is making the quadrillionaires more quadrillions. Because if you understand how these markets work, you could just front run it too. You're like, oh, this is easy. Stock market, know a couple lines, you're like, oh, I can make money. And for those of you who are like, that's none of that's money, Bitcoin is money. Well, I'll tell you, your money is high probability. These are just probabilities that one of these patterns is gonna play out. Would you like to measure the flagpole from there down to 13K? Do you wanna measure the flagpole down there to 16K? Or does the Fed all of a sudden pivot and it goes up to 21K? I'm, I'm, I'm saying your probabilities are to the downside. Now enough of Bitcoin, because I know how you guys sometimes feel about that, just know. You're jumping on drywall, you know, you, you jump enough and the drywall breaks. Uh, also, if you're interested in how to trade a bear market, link in the description for only $200 for the entire course. I'm filming it, I'm gonna end filming, and then the price is going to jump up immediately. I may even bump the course price before I even do that because 200 sounds totally stupidly ridiculous. The fate of the world, and I said this, the world's economy, it, it depends on one company. Crazy. Thank you, Market Insider. Wonder who that company is. The economy may depend on what happens to a company's most Americans have never heard of. It is all about chips and dip, my friends. It is the chip industry and Taiwan, but we're trying to take that all back. Like, good, idea, good idea, Marika, before China takes Taiwan. Which don't hold your breath on that one. It should be quickly. The fate of the global economy may rest on the shoulders of one company, TSMC. And what do they do, you ask? They make chips and guac, world's biggest chip maker. This is what runs the whole world. Just like when you try to go out there and buy a car. Oh, it doesn't have chips? Oops. Locked up that assembly line. It's a chip power everything from cars to iPhones. Why does it always have to be iPhones? It's just, it's cellular phones. Like, anyways, but US-China tensions and China standoff with Taiwan could cost the global economy trillions. So guys, if some reason you see this article on TSMC or China invading Taiwan, the market will rumble. If China would invade Taiwan, oh, that would be the biggest impact we've seen to our a global economy. Can you believe that? One little, little teeny guy that uh, produces chips, possibly ever. That is what a vice president research, that's a big one, Glenn, to put on your business card. Uh, this could be bigger than 1929. So as if everything wasn't already a big fluster cluck, here you go. Something else to put into the shoe that's gonna drop bigger than 1929. If for some reason you see an article that uh, China invaded Taiwan today, um, protect your portfolio. But we have so much uncertainty in the markets, do we not? Where do we move our money? What do we do? I just, I can teach you how to make money on the way down. I can teach you how to make money on the way up. But if they destroy this whole system, you got me. If they take down the debt-based system, the bond market, okay, then uh, who knows? All I knows is that uh, consumers are soldering.
on display. I don't even know what soldering is. I'm assuming you're a, a soldier and, and you don't like inflation and I don't know. I mean, why do these editors, who is this? Yun Li, why? You have to use words that uh, I have no idea. Why don't we do something like uncertainty? That would be good. Clouds holiday shopping for consumers as inflation takes a toll. Yeah, because consumers don't have any money. Well, actually, your savings account is currently at zero. Your credit cards are completely maxed out, except for the 1%. And see here, there, see right above my my head right there, there's your savings account currently gone. I mean, is this lower than any, any time in history? If you start looking at the cash assets on uh, all commercial banks, it's up there. That is a, that's a head and shoulders that's playing out up there. So we're going to bring that back down even for the 1%. Actually, wouldn't it be kind of nice? I mean, if the ship's going down, like just take it, you guys, the, the nice people, I have life vests and rafts for you. You could do, but to, to watch like the 0% lose everything. I'm like, okay, well, if they're going, if I'm going down, you're going down with me, but it doesn't look like uh, that is going down anytime soon. And that line, my friends, is that is the 0%. Oh, and also before I forget, hey, Louis Vuitton, Louis, they lost their, they, they were argue, arguing a pattern in court. They lost it. See that one? Yep. Court says no. So you can actually, now you do your due diligence. If you want to take my Amazon course and how to launch products and make wallets and things like that, of that, that, that logo where well, you can't, you can't write Louis Vuitton on it. You can stick it to the 0% because the court said so. So any way you look at it, I try to help you make money on this channel, either start businesses or trade these things. Cause when they break, you right? it's a probability, but if it breaks up, okay, you'll, you'll lose everything. And, and the fib it's, it's up there. So just be careful on that one. But try out my uh, bear market courses. If it doesn't work for you, I'll, I'll, I'll fly out and buy you drinks. Thank you guys for hanging out. To I can't because I'm trying to not drink for a day. I'll see you tomorrow.